I had that song on my heart and I had asked Naya to sing that song, Oh, Come to the Altar. Because the altar isn't a place where we have to have it all together. The altar isn't a place where we have to cross all our T's and dot all our I's. We can literally come to the altar and we can come to the altar broken. The altar is a place where God can reveal himself to us and to fix that which needs to be fixed in us and in our circumstance and in our situation. But we as believers, you know what we need to do? Come is an action word. So there's times in our lives that we need to come and it might not be a physical altar, but there's an altar in our hearts. You can come to the Lord at any moment of any day. If you're walking down the street, you can come to the Lord. If you're on the job, you can come to the Lord. If you're in your home, you can come to the Lord. If you're in the shower, you can come to the Lord. Wherever you're at, you can come to the Lord and you can be broken before him. And he will meet you in that place. You see time and time again in the Old Testament, the Lord asked the men of God, build an altar. And at that place, he named it. So he wants to reveal himself when you come to him Hallelujah. in a place of brokenness and in a place of surrender. <laughs> and this morning, the Lord gave me a word. The title is the house was filled with an aroma of ointment. The house was filled with an aroma of ointment. And a lot of times, and I don't know about you, but when I'm going through something, there's moments and times, even as I stand behind the pulpit, that the enemy wants to keep me from these doors. That your own emotions and your own circumstances just, you know what, it'd be better if I just rolled over in bed this morning and didn't show up in the house of God. There's been moments and times where I didn't show up in the house of God the very day that I needed to show up in the house of God. The very day that I needed somebody to say, come on, sister, let's keep going. Come on, brother, pick up your head and we can keep going in the Lord. This is a place, a house of healing. Yes. Yes. This is a house where the broken can be healed. Amen. This isn't a place where every single person is going to be perfect. And praise God for it. We can come in and allow the Lord to do what he wants to do. And I thank God I don't come into a house where everybody does have to be perfect. Because I'm not. So I can lift my hands and worship the Lord despite who I am. Because of who he is. And when Naya said, turn on. The, turn off the music and let's just worship the Lord. So I was quiet for a minute. That's rare. And, and I was just listening to all of your voices sing. And it was the most beautiful thing. It was so sweet because I know that I'm going through something and that Troy's going through something and Michelle's going through something and Naya and Robert and we're all going something different in life but you know what I still heard I still heard you lifting up your voices and praising the Lord despite what you might be going through and that's where he can meet you that's where he can touch you and if you would turn with me to John chapter 12 verse 1 John chapter 12, verse 1, and if you don't have your word, they show it on the screen. The word reads, Then Jesus, six days before Passover, came to Bethany. And when I was reading that, he came to Patterson. Come on, we need to apply the word of God to ourselves and to our own lives. Jesus came to Patterson. I need Jesus to show up in Baton Rouge, to show up wherever I'm at. So Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany. 
Bethany, where Lazarus, which was which had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with an odor of ointment. Verse 7 says, Then said Jesus, Let her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. And if you would pray with me this morning, Father, I come before you, Lord, and I know that you gave me this word. God, and this word is always for the messenger first. God, that we would walk through it, that we would live it out. God, that we would be able to express it and teach it to your people. And I pray, Lord God, God, I know that what we go through is not wasted and it is not in vain, oh God. Lord, so I pray that you would anoint me and you would anoint your word, God, and you would anoint the ears to hear. Lord, remove every distraction that would come to rob, to kill, and to destroy what you want to do in your people this morning, oh God. God, let this moment in time stand still. Arrest our hearts by the power of your spirit, oh God, and let our let our spirit hear, God what you have to say to the church for the time and the day that we live in, oh God, that we could apply your word to our lives, that it would be experiential knowledge, oh God, that it wouldn't just be head knowledge, that we wouldn't just know something about you, but we would have an encounter with the living God. I pray you remove every mountain and you raise up every valley, oh God, God, that we would be able to stand in the day that we live in, Lord. God, I pray, reveal yourself this morning in this house and in our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. What I love about this story is that this story is found in every single gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they're synoptic gospels. So that means that they're similar in nature. They have similar stories in them. But John has unique stories in it. But what I love about this is the Holy Spirit, think about this for a second, found it so important to put this story in each gospel. So that means that this story was imprinted on the hearts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write it down in each one of those Gospels. And I found in the scripture that it says, it was in Matthew, it says that this moment would be made to be a memorial to this woman. So this action of faith that she portrayed, Jesus said, this is going to be a memorial. You are going to remember this woman in this moment by what she did for me. By the fact that she was broken before me, you're going to remember the anointing that came from this woman. You're going to remember the aroma have you ever met anyone before that when they walk in the room, just the sweetness and the presence of Christ fills the room? Naya's mom, actually, she was the director of the ministry that I was at before. And I'm telling you, when this woman of God walked in the room, there was a presence of Christ that was just permeating through her. That when she walked in the room, you knew Jesus was in the room with you too. And that's what I want people to remember me by. And I know that's your heart. That when you're on the job, it's just they just see Jesus permeating through you. When you're walking through the store, they're like, what's different about that man? What's different about that child? What's different about that woman? That Jesus would just permeate through you the presence and 
the sweetness that you would react differently the way the other co-workers are treating someone else. That there will be such a sweetness to your life and, to, and the presence of Christ in your life. So what I came to talk to you about this morning is Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. And he wants to fill our hearts with the sweetness of his presence. Despite what we're facing, you have complete access to the presence and the power of God at all times. That's good. Yeah. No matter what you go through, you can remember Jesus is in the house. And that he wants to give you the power and the anointing and the sweetness of his presence to face anything that you face on a daily basis. This is a daily walk with God. And that while you're broken, he is fighting. While you are broken, he is fighting. And if, Manuel, you can turn the screen on. Uh, Pastor Matt said he had to compete with me, and I actually did a PowerPoint for the adults today, so don't tell him. <laughs> if you can make it big at the bottom, it's like it looks like a little desk down there. Over, over to the left. Well, you can make it big like that if you want. Okay, if you go to the next slide. So there's this song, and I don't know if you've ever heard it before, but it's called My God Fights for Me. My God Fights for Me. And if you haven't heard it, look it up on YouTube. And the portion that really stuck out to me, and this is where I, I captured this word from, it says, I stumbled into the room with alabaster and my wounds. See, I can feel their judging eyes as I knelt before the Christ. I poured my oil upon his feet. I didn't care who saw me weep. I gave him all I had that day, and he should have sent me on my way. But instead, he lifted up my head because my God fights for me. Amen. And I began, I mean, I'm telling you, it's a powerful song. If you can get it on YouTube, listen to it. But what I loved about it is it says she stumbled into the room. Okay, what shows me, and I'm going to set a scene for you here, is that she was about to trip or lose balance or almost fall. And what I loved about that is that can sometimes show our condition in Christ. Things aren't always sturdy. They're not always, we're not always on a mountain top. There's times our faith can get shaken. But you know where she stumbled? She didn't stumble somewhere she wasn't supposed to. She stumbled into the presence of the master. And it say in the, in, in the lyrics that she came in, you know, in her Sunday best. And she, no, it said she was wounded. She, have you ever been so wounded before and broken before the Lord that you can actually feel it in the pit of your stomach? Jesus could see those wounds as she, as she crawled into the presence of the Lord. There's been moments and days where I have crawled into the presence of the Lord. Literally. That it took everything that was in me to get into the presence of God. Sometimes the damage that is done can be so damaging by our circumstances or our situations, or even by our own choices. Think about that. Even by our own choices, we can damage our faith. But you know what you can still do? You can still come into the presence of the master. Even if you've fallen and you've messed up, you can still stumble into the presence of the master. It doesn't matter how little or how much that she had because he wanted it all. See, Jesus isn't going to relent until he has it all. So she went with the alabaster, which showed what she had, but she also, she also went with her wounds. And she went before Christ. Listen, people are going to judge you. They're going to look at you. The world is going to look at you and say, what are they doing? This is 
foolishness. Your own pride. Have you ever been in the seat before and the Holy Spirit has been all over you and you know you're supposed to respond to the altar call? Or you're no, you know you're supposed to do something and your own pride keeps you in your seat? Yeah. Yes. I have. I mean, I'm just going to tell you the truth. That my own pride and my own fear of man or what other people are going to think about me going to the altar, receiving what God... See, the altar isn't a place. It's a place where God can just meet you. The altar doesn't heal you. Jesus does. Amen. But it's just a step of faith. Showing God, I believe what you've spoken today and I need you to do that. But see, there's going to be others that are going to look at you even within the church. I've seen people so broken before the Lord and be and really, and I'm, I know what's going on in their life. And people actually walk out of the church. Please don't be one of those people. They just walk out because you know what? Somebody needs you. Somebody needs you to come lay hands on them. Somebody needs you to lift them up. Somebody needs you to encourage them. And one day that person might just be you. Because backed into the corner in the right circumstance, you could be the one that's on your face before the Lord. And you don't want people to be judging you and looking at you and walk out on you. So love them with the same love that Jesus loves them. Because she, he wanted her to come. Oh, come to the altar. Oh, come. And the religious people who think they have it all together look to her and suck their noses up in the air. There is none righteous, no, not one. That's what the Bible says. There is none righteous. So she chose to kneel in humility and surrender. When you choose to surrender to God, there is a freedom in that surrender. There is an act of worship and there is a freedom that comes in surrendering to th things to God. So when she chose to kneel before him, the grace of God, now the power of the Holy Spirit can now move in her life because she chose to surrender. Yeah. And the Lord told me to say this, and I'm speaking to myself too, but let it go. And I don't know what that means to you, and I don't know, but I know what it means to me. But God told me, let go of the pain, let go of the wounds, let go of the struggle, let go of the battle, let go of that wrong direction that you've been going, let go of the forgiveness, let go of the doubt, let go of the fear, let go of the unbelief. Stop holding on to things that are going to hold you back from the direction that God wants you to go. Yes. Let it go. Whatever that means to you, let it go. And you can say, well, Angela, I've been trying to let it go. Well, guess what? Keep coming. <laughs> keep coming to the altar and keep giving it to him. Awesome. Keep surrendering it to him. Because the Bible says in Judges, well, in Deuteronomy, that it's little by little by little by little. So don't get discouraged when you feel like I've been at the feet of Jesus about the same thing for the last 20 years. Well, he doesn't get weary and he doesn't slumber and he doesn't sleep. So that means you can keep coming and keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. And one day you're going to look up and yes. say, wow, that yes. thing doesn't bother me anymore. Or, yeah, praise him for it because he's going to do it if you believe him for it. His word is true true and she poured oil on his feet and she didn't care who saw her weep and she gave him all that she had that day the oil of God can heal you you need oil this morning I need oil this morning are you tired of running are you tired of hurting don't worry about who sees you come to him because that very person that's sitting in their seat, that's watching you worship, that's watching you press through the pain, that's watching you come to the altar, might be the very life that you're touching and you never know it. I've had people actually come up to me years later that I've worked with, years later, and be like, Angela, and they've treated me horrible. So I'm not saying that this has been a, a, a piece of cake, but they treated me bad, but years later would call and be like, can you pray for me? Because I let my life reflect Christ even in the hard times. 
So don't worry about who's watching you come to Jesus. You just keep coming to Jesus and you just keep getting what you need and then you'll be able to give it to someone else. And then the, and the lyrics say, and he should have sent me on my way, but instead he lifted up my head because my God fights for me. God's love is unconditional love. It never ends and it never runs dry. And the beautiful thing about God's love is no matter how deep the wound, no matter how dark the place, no matter how strong the bondage, no, no matter how far we've run from him, his love never fails. And he never shuts the door. He never closes his arms. He always just keeps calling, come. Just keep coming, just keep coming, just keep coming. And he'll never push you away. He'll always receive you, but not only receive you, but fight for you. He will fight for you and he will fight for your family. If you could go to the next slide. This is a friend of mine. Her name's Sunny and Sonny Hoffman, I don't know if uh, Pastor Matt or Danielle, you have ever met the Hoffmans before, but they have a church. And I loved this. And if you're a parent, then you can probably um, understand what she's saying here. She says, as a parent, there is not a day that goes by where it was a good day or a day with nothing but constant correction, training, and discipline that I go to bed thinking, I'm done. She's hopeless. Have you ever felt that way before that God's working on you, constantly training you, disciplining you, and you might feel like, man, he's got to be done with me by now. But Sonny says as a mother, she's never gone to bed, even with a day like that, looking at her daughter who's at the bottom there, saying, I'm done, she's hopeless. As a mother, every part of my being just wants to wrap her up when I put her to bed and say, I love you, let's do it again tomorrow. I love you, let's try again tomorrow. How many times do we lay upon our head upon the pillow thinking as a child of God that God's going to say, you know what? I'm done with her. I'm done with him. I'm done with this family. I'm done with the church. I'm done. They made too many mistakes. No. God says, okay. I love you. Let's try again tomorrow. And I'm going to give you the power to walk through tomorrow. And I loved that because so many times we feel like God is just going to send us on our way. And then he doesn't love us anymore. But he does. He does love us. So I see this. Why Bethany? And I don't know about you, but we can live in, in a... In a quiet place or a place that's set aside. I didn't know where Patterson, Louisiana was. I'm going to be honest with you. And I, when I was driving here, I'm like, Lord, where are we going? The first couple of times, I'm like, okay, Lord, like, where do you have me going? But I love this because Bethany was also a small place. It was a secluded place. And it was a quiet place. And it was right outside Jerusalem. So it was strategically placed. God doesn't do anything by accident. He orchestrates it or allows it in your life. Let me say that again. He does not do anything by accident. So it's not an accident you're sitting here. It's not an accident that you were drawn to this place. Jesus is in the house. Jesus came to Bethany and Jesus comes to Patterson, Louisiana. And he's here. He's here. And he is the God of the details. So, each detail in your life, he's setting up and he's ordering. Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and Simon the leper were those that were in Bethany. And we're going to talk about some of who they were and what their characteristics were. Lazarus was dead and was raised from the dead. Have you ever been dead in trespasses and in sin? And Jesus raised you from the dead? So who was in Bethany? The dead. The dead that were raised again were in Bethany. Who else was in Bethany? Simon the leper. 
was in Bethany. Who else was there? Martha, who was cumbered in doubt and fear and serving, serving the Lord, but still was weighed down. Who else was there? The doubters. No, let's get real. The church is filled with those that were dead and raised again. The church is filled with those who doubt and those who fear and those who serve. The church is filled with the lepers, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. The church, was, this place was also a place where Jesus blessed his disciples and then ascended. I want to tell you this. It's not about quantity. It's not about numbers. It's about the quality yeah. of Jesus. It's about the quality of what you're being taught. It's about the quality of relationship that you have with God. This might not be a shouting message to you, but it's a shouting message to me because I know that Jesus is here and Jesus is doing a work in the midst yeah. of these yes. people. Yes. These people are coming together and Jesus wants to do a work in them. And I think he's asking us here today, are you going to be like these people and believe me and trust me in your secluded Patterson, Louisiana and quiet place? Are you going to trust me? Are you going to believe me? Are you going to seek me? Are you going to have faith in me? Are you going to keep pressing despite what you go through? Because God worked miracles in Bethany. And God wants to work miracles here in Patterson. And we're no, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. From the youngest to the oldest, he still wants to work miracles in this place today. And I loved that Jesus chose to go to a leper's house. Like, that's the house that they were eating in. That's where he chose to go. He didn't choose to go to the rich. And there's nothing wrong with, with financial blessings and the Lord blessing you. He is a blessing God. So I'm not preaching down to that because I believe God wants to give to his people. But he chose to go to the leper's house, which a leprosy, and this, I don't know, we've got kids? How young? Okay, I have a little, it's kind of graphic, so... Um, leprosy, if you could go to the next screen. Oh, well, keep going. Leprosy starts off on the skin as a skin disorder, and then you begin to lose limbs, and then you're completely deformed. And if you would just go to the next screen, so then... Oh, that's cute. So, <laughs> I don't want to keep it up for the children's sake. But, why I had those pictures was because I wanted to show you what possibly Jesus could have been walking into. And he wasn't intimidated to go into that house. He wanted to go there. And I want to show you this. In each picture, sin progressed. The leprosy over a period of time progressed. To a skin disorder, to all over, to loss of extremities, to completely deformed. When we allow sin in our lives, little by little, over a period of time, it will eat away at your relationship with Christ. And eventually you will look in the mirror and be completely deformed. And I would say that, that you might not look like that person. You won't. But you might look like that person inside. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Because I remember when I woke up one day, and this is what really got me. I wanted to be a dentist. And years later, after I allowed sin in my life for so long and went on this downward spiral, I looked in the mirror and literally didn't recognize the woman I had become at all. Like, at all. And then when I was locked up and in shackles, I really didn't realize. I was like, who is this woman that I had become? But that was the sin effect. Right. That was the effect of me allowing sin and not repenting and turning back to God. I allowed the sin to get so bad that it ate away, away at everything I had. See, loss of limbs... You're going to lose people in your life if you allow sin to just 
r ruin your life? Yeah. It, you'll lose jobs, you'll lose finances, you'll lose everything. And you could say, well, God, why are you allowing this? Because he wants to get our attention. Amen. Not because he's a harsh God, but because he's a loving God. But I have hope because I say all that to set a picture. But Jesus went to that house. Yes. See, Jesus chose to go to that house. Even with being completely deformed, even when the law said unclean, unfit to worship, can't come into the presence of God, they actually put lepers on an island. They separated them from everyone else. Sin will separate you from God and from everyone else. But... God, Jesus chose to go to this house. He didn't hesitate to dwell where lepers went. He didn't hesitate to touch a leper. He didn't hesitate to dine with a leper. He had compassion on the leper. He's not intimidated by our condition and didn't stop him from entering into the house where society deemed this person no longer able to come around. Jesus said, that's where I want to go. I've been there. Where the rest of society has said she's a lost cause. Where jobs and bosses and family members have said she's too far gone. See, society deemed these people a lost cause. But Jesus said, I'm going to go there. Yeah. That's where I want to go because that's where my power and my glory can be manifested. And listen to this. That's where I'm accepted. See, the rich and the religious weren't accepting what he had for them. So he went to those who were desperate, those that were broken, and those that knew their need of him and said, Here I am in Bethany. Here I am. And there is where they made him supper. And Martha served, but Lazarus was one who sat with them at the table. He goes where he is welcome. But who else was there? The disciples were there. But who else was there? Judas was there. And I love this because Jesus sat at the table with one that was dead, one that was a doubter, one that was broken, his disciples who were following him, but he even sits at the table of one who betrays. Think about that. One who he knew who would wound him, one who he knew would hand him over. Why would he sit at that table? Come on now. You have ever had somebody hurt you before and you're like, I'm never dealing with them again. That wound was so deep that you don't want anything to do with them anymore. And Jesus said, come, sit down. I want to eat with you. Wow. Why would Jesus do that? Why? Because it, his arm isn't too short. His arm is so long that he wants even the one who had chosen to betray him. He knew he would betray him to give him the opportunity to repent and to come back. See, even when we do, we disappoint or feel like we've disappointed the Lord or we've betrayed him or we've turned our back on him there's always hope for that person yes there's always hope for that one who has denied him he said come and eat with me and what I love about this is the table is always set the table is set the psalm says I prepare a table in the presence of my enemies mm. He anoints my head with oil and my cup runneth over. You see, in the house of the leper, he prepared the table. Yes. He prepared it with victory. He prepared it with deliverance. He prepared it with righteousness and healing. He prepared the table and he was calling people to come and sit with him. Even those who betrayed him in the presence of his enemy. But anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Over Well, what's oil? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, then, Angela, who is the Holy Spirit? How can he help me? Well, oil was a place of richness, fruitfulness, expansion, and growth. You want to grow in the things of God? You want the richness and the satisfaction that only Jesus can bring? It's through access of the oil. And what can the oil bring? 
The oil, oil, well, the Holy Spirit in the Greek means parakletos. So that's one who's called alongside to help you. The Holy Spirit is one that is called alongside to help you. Well, how can he help me? Well, let's get some names of the Holy Spirit. He's an advisor. He's an instructor. He's a guide. He's an advocate, an attorney, the spirit of glory, the fire shut up in your bones, the spirit of life, the spirit of adoption, the spirit of wisdom, the breath of the almighty God. He's an intercessor, a helper, a caretaker, a comforter, the spirit of truth. Who is he in your life? See, those are just some of the attributes of who the Holy Spirit wants to reveal. You need a doctor. He's got healing for you in the oil. But you got to come. The psalm also says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. That means that your daily walk with Jesus has to be a fresh, renewed walk with Jesus each and every day. You need to come to him. And why do I say all these things? Because that's what's set on the table is the power and the presence of God that he was calling the people to. And what I love about this side note is the best oil is the beaten oil. So have you feel like God's really bringing you through the ringer and you've been going through some things? Well, he's trying to take some things out so he can put some fresh oil in. So he can give you power to overcome. So you can walk along this life and not be distracted or dismayed by the things that come your way. Because you still have to walk through this life. But the best oil is the beaten oil. In verse 3, it says, Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard. It was very costly, and anointed his feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with an odor of ointment. Mary poured herself out on Jesus. Do you need to know what you need to do today and every day of your life is pour yourself out? On Jesus tell him what's going on you can be honest with with Jesus he already sees it anyway he already knows what's going on anyway he already knows your thoughts your intentions your motives he knows it all so you can lay before the Lord and say God I'm dealing with anxiety God I'm dealing with depression God I'm dealing with the enemy God I'm dealing with this and that and I need you I have financial burden. God, I want you to bless me indeed and enlarge my borders. God, I want you to break forth and break this bondage out of my life. You can lay it all before him. Whatever it is, lay it before him. And I love this because this was the same Mary that was sit sitting at his feet. So it's not a, just a one time deal. You don't just go and sit at the feet of Jesus one time. And everything is fixed. Her pattern of lifestyle, listen to that, her pattern, it was a pattern in Mary's life that she was at the feet of Jesus. And that needs to be a pattern in our lives. That we are constantly running and sitting at the feet of Jesus, despite her circumstances. Now, God can meet a need and bless us, and we can tend to forget about sitting at the feet of Jesus. Right, right. Think about it. Her brother was dead. Now, that would, that would make me sit at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. Okay? My brother dies. I'm sitting at the feet of Jesus. He raises the brother. I would be booking around this church yes. if I seen someone that was dead and that was raised again. You would see smoke coming off my heels around this church praising God. Amen. But that didn't take her away from sitting at the feet of Jesus. I don't know what happened in between her brother being raised from the dead and from her being broken at the feet of Jesus. But nothing stopped her. Not blessing or not circumstance. 
So don't let the blessings of God keep you from sitting at the feet of Jesus. Don't let your own family members keep you from sitting at the feet of Jesus. And I thought this was interesting. The Lord showed me this on the way here when I was going through everything. Mary, I mean, Martha and Lazarus were there. And she still ran to the feet of Jesus. And she could have said, Martha, what do you want me to do to help to set the table? How can I help you serve? Mm -hmm. Or she could have sat down with Lazarus, who was sitting at the table with the disciples and Judas and, and Jesus, and said, okay, well, I'm just going to sit and rest and partake in the benefits of Christ. Oh, good. No, 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 no. She said, forget everybody else. I'm going to the feet. I'm going to the feet of Jesus. Because she knew something about the Lord that she was so intimate with the Lord that, no, that, that others didn't. They didn't have that, what she had. And she went to the feet of Jesus. She didn't let family members stop her. She didn't let the religious stop her. She didn't let the other disciples stop her. It didn't matter. She was getting to the feet of Jesus. What you're going through inside, the position of your heart will always reflect and manifest itself outwardly. So however you're approaching the Lord or whatever you're facing will always express itself outwardly. And what her heart expressed is that she wanted to seek him and that she wanted his presence more than anything else. And that she wanted to be at his feet and she wanted to be close to the master and she wanted to touch him and she wanted to because she had gratitude, humility and surrender. But that took separation. God will take you to a place that's going to separate you from everyone else. You will have to let go of family members. You will have to let go of friendships. You will have to let go of places and people and things that you, you will have to let go to get closer and closer to Jesus. But what God takes away from you, he will always give you back a hundredfold. What God does, he will bless you more than you can only... Let me tell you, I never in a million years thought I would go from a prison cell to where I am today. Like, if you would have told me that when I was in jail, you, I would have been like, yeah, okay, right. Like, I would have never, ever have known the things that God was going to do in my life. And I say that with humility because there's days that go by that I'm like, Lord, why isn't this happening yet or that happening yet? And right now I even stand under the conviction of the power of the Spirit knowing that he's already brought me thus far. Why wouldn't he bring me any further? And everything that he's done, everything has been, the. I mean, it's blown my mind. Like, I'm like, how did I even, I wake up in my house in the morning, I'm like, how did I end up here? Only the grace of God could have done that. And what I love about this is that this oil cost $15,000 in today's money. Wow. Let me see you put $15,000 in this offering <laughs> bath. No, I'm just playing. Um, but no, but really, it was $15,000 that she broke at the feet of Jesus. But not only that, it said the alabaster box, it's recorded that it's from Egypt in the 1600s. That means that this box was authentic. That this box that she carried the oil in was an antique, which probably cost a lot more money. So the oil plus the antique, I, and I seen it as such genuine faith that this walk with Jesus, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost your whole life, but how much has he given for you? He's given his life for you, so we give it back in return to him. But he doesn't just leave us there empty-handed. He just keeps pouring himself into us. He's given us power and delivered the sweetness of Christ. So she poured all that she had. And can you imagine the activity around her? Hmm. Come on. There's been times in her life.
like that the, the, the activity in your mind and your emotions and uh, and this is going on at the job have you ever been in worship I'll, I'll put myself out there and and this is going on at the job and this is going on at home and then and then I got to deal with this and I got to pay this bill and I, I'm really hungry my stomach is ground I mean I'm just I'm being light with it but there's all these different things that come to distract and torment us and to pull away from what God wants to say to you or do in your life. Amen. And all of a sudden, she walks in this room. Her, her sister's busy serving. Lazarus is sitting there and they're talking to Jesus. And she's like, all the distractions and all the noise and everything that's going on, I'm just, I'm getting to the master's feet. And she got to the master's feet. And allow the box to be broken and the oil to spill out. The closer you get to the Lord, the more the oil can flow in your life. The sweeter the aroma that will fill the room. The sweeter the breath. Listen, you can wake up in the morning and have, and the most disastrous thing could have happened. And still the sweetness and presence of Christ yes. can bring peace to your heart yes. like nothing in this world can bring peace to your heart. It can bring joy unspeakable. And I'm not talking about a happiness. Happiness is temporal. I'm talking about a joy that's down deep, that despite if someone has cancer or this has happened or that, or I'm facing this, I can still praise my God. I can still get to the feet of Jesus. And when you do that, he produces a joy in your heart. Yeah. And then I started looking at this. She wiped her hair on his feet. And I was like, Lord, I like my hair. No. But hair was a place of honor back then. It represented honor. She was wiping what was represented as honor on his feet. How much did she honor him with her life? She honored him so much that she was willing to give everything and to honor him. And I pray that that's our heartbeat as the body of Christ, that we're willing to give him everything and honor him. And you thought you were going to get away with no object lesson. <laughs> Naya, if you would come up here, please. <laughs> come on, Naya, move it, move it. <laughs> All right. Candle represents the light of Christ, right? Well, first of all, we need to take the top off the candle, which at times can represent our stubbornness, our pride, our agendas, our own plans, our own ways. We have to come to the Lord and we need to surrender to him. Okay, so that's going to represent our life being given to Christ. Now we can be an open vessel and he can begin to work in us. These are household items, just in case you didn't know. Okay, here, and he comes and he takes his light and he places it. Turn it upside down so I don't burn you. Sometimes your life is upside down when he's lighting that flame. Uh-oh. Come. Yeah, you do it. There we go. So, hold that. So he lights our life, right? This bucket I thought was pretty cute. And it's white on the outside, right? So it's cleansed. We're a cleansed vessel. And the light of Christ, after we surrender, we're now placed in to a cleansed vessel. So the light of Christ will be placed in. Hold it. But, can you see the light? Can't see the light through a vessel that is stubborn, self-willed. Okay, it looks real good. They come to church, they raise their hands, they pay their tithes, they take care of my kids and kids' ministry. Everything looks wonderful, cleansed from the outside. But they're not allowing their heart to be given to the Lord and to be broken before Him. So I, I got this, and I was thinking about gold, that God 
that when God begins to work on us, he refines us as gold. Mm -hmm. And then, but then he begins to break us and there's cracks in us. And then he takes the light and he places us, it, he places the light in it. And when you turn off the lights, when I have this in my bathroom and I turn off all the lights, you see this, this imprint shining on all the different right. yeah. walls. See, God wants to us to be an imprint that imprints on this world, that imprints That's on good. our yes. family, Hallelujah. that imprints on anyone we come across. But this bucket couldn't imprint on anyone because it wasn't broken. Mm. See, That's when good. we're broken before the Lord, it allows people to see Jesus in times that they necessarily would have been running the worldly pleasures and worldly things to try to fix it. But then instead, they can see the brokenness of Christ in us and his power in us. I want to be a broken vessel, not just a vessel that looks good on the outside because brokenness doesn't always look good for the moment. But in the end, yes. you imprint on all of the world Hallelujah. and all of society. Hallelujah. And that's what we were created to do. We were created to worship him with our lives, with our lifestyle, with the pattern of our lives. Thank you, Maya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Don't let, when God is working like that, and I'm going to close in a moment, don't let the enemy come in and steal what God is doing. See, Judas was at the table in the presence of thine enemies, and Judas was a thief. And the enemy will try to rob, kill, and destroy your faith and your relationship with the Lord. And he will use people, places, things to do it. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of darkness and wicked rulers of the air. So it's not that person, but it's forces of darkness that are trying to rob your relationship with Jesus. And what... I thought it was interesting in verse 4, 5, and 6, and you don't have to put it up on the screen. But when you choose to give everything to Jesus and hold nothing back, there will always be opposition right, right. to you moving forward in the things of God. Because if you get a hold of Jesus, your life can affect so many others, and they can get a hold of Jesus. And your life can imprint on eternal lives. Hallelujah. But see, what happens is, is the enemy will always oppose, and the disciples were sitting there, and Judas is sitting there, and he goes, what a waste. Mm. What a waste of oil. And I think there's been times in my life that the enemy, especially in Bible college, or even times now, that the enemy has come in and said, what are you doing with your life? Sitting in Bible college for four years, what kind of degree is that going to get you? And people would ask me, what kind of degree you get? I, get, I was like, no degree, I just know Jesus. Yeah. Like, there's no degree. <laughs> but, but I got closer to the master and I got closer to the Lord and I learned how to live for him. Yes, Lord. Yes. That is irreplaceable. That's right. That is irreplaceable. But the enemy will always come in and say, what's that? going to that church in Patterson, Louisiana. That's a waste of your time. Don't give your tithes. That's a waste of your money. Don't give, do this or do that. It's a waste. It's a waste. It's a waste. <laughs> Nothing is wasted in Christ when we're, when we're in him, when we're giving to him. The enemy will sow a seed that you're throwing your life away. And he said, whoa, what a waste. But it's a lie. Mm -hmm. It's yes. a lie. Yes. And you see these sweet puppies here? <laughs> okay, so Nye and I are driving home. And we get turned around. Okay, but remember I told you that nothing is on accident mm -hmm. and everything is for a reason. 
Well, we can turn around on this back road. Robert told us afterwards we were going the wrong way. <laughs> well, we didn't know that. So that, that top puppy right there, I see him, and he's sitting on the side of the road. And he look, he's shaking. And we're driving this way, and the puppy's over here. I was like, Naya, did you see that? She's like, I know, I know. So we're driving, and we're driving, and I'm like, pull over, turn around. So she's like, okay, okay. So she turns around and we drive up next to this puppy and it's wet and it stinks. I mean, it stunk so bad. And I just got my brand new car, okay? It's brand new and white and it's still got that brand new smell in it, you know? And, and I only put my dogs in it one time. That's how serious I am about this car. So I get this towel out and I put it over the puppy and I, and I pick it up and it's all over my clothes and it stinks. And I'm like, oh Lord. So I'm carrying this puppy and we see another one coming out of the swamp. And I'm like, and it's wet, and it, it's a mom. And I'm like, Naya, it's the puppy's mom. How are we going to get it? We spend 45 minutes. Okay, it takes us an hour and a half to get here, an hour and a half to get back. That's three hours on Sunday, okay? Then we're here. So we're taking another 45 minutes to try to catch this dog. We're giving him cracklins. We were doing all <laughs> we were crazy <laughs> and so they stop and she turns around and she's like what are you guys doing and we're like we're trying to get this dog so the sheriff comes up okay which could be the type and shadow of the holy spirit and brings the son dog to the mother and the mother comes out See, when the Son of God is presented before the people, the people are drawn by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we get the, the other dog, and we put them in my car, and we, we shut the lid, and we call Robert. <laughs> yes, we did. I said, Robert, we got these two dogs. We don't know what to do. Okay, sometimes you need to call the body of Christ for some help. Okay, so call the body of Christ, and we, we don't know. He's like, where are you at? And so I tell him, and he's like, Angela, why are you going that way? I was like, for the dogs. Like, I don't know. Like, this, you know, God allows us to run into some things to be able to help some people, and we don't even know where we're at. So we get back to Robert. Man, these dogs, he said it must have been eaten on something dead. That's why they smelled like that. I mean, when I tell you, it was really bad. It was really bad. But there are times in our lives that we smell that bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. <clears throat> they, our attitudes mm -hmm. are that bad. Yeah, yeah. That the decisions that we make smell that bad. Mm -hmm. And they were wet and hungry. Nothing in this world can satisfy us. Right. We are, you will be hungry and you will be cold and you will be wet. But what I loved about it is, go to the next picture. We show up at Robert's house. Also, they are infested with fleas. Like when I talk about, yeah, in my brand new car, they are infested. I mean, you could see them crawling through their fur. And I am a dog lover. So I am like, Robert, there's fleas and we got to help them. And, and so he feeds them. We feed them. See, Christ immediately picks us up. I covered them with the towel, was trying to get them warm, okay? He covers us. Okay, he's going to find us somewhere in a ditch somewhere, in a bad situation somewhere, and he didn't stop at the leper's house. He said, I'm coming in, and he, we went and we got those dogs, despite what they smelled like, despite what they looked like, despite it, and I put them in my brand new car, and we drove them, and we fed them, and they began to feel better. Like you could see the life coming back into them. And then they started running around in what was his yard. Okay, I know that when we first come to the Lord, you hear all these rules and regulations and you feel like you're trapped in. 
Okay, well, I'm going to get real with you for a second. At times you feel like the laws are trapping you in, but they're boundaries that God sets around us to keep us safe, to keep us in the life that Christ has for us. We don't live by rules and regulations. We live by the power of God in a relationship with Jesus, but those are set. If those dogs would have run across the street, they would have got hit. So they're set to protect us and keep us in Christ and in Christ what could they do they could rest they could eat we cleanse them Robert went to the store and got flea killer I was like yes because I didn't want them to be the same way that they were when we found them like I was like no way and we didn't know if they were gonna um if we were gonna find the the, the owners or what so it was 17 shares later on Facebook phone calls I mean we were looking and I was like God please let it be in a house of good people and this lady called me on Facebook messenger and she's like I think you have my dogs and I was like well praise God and it literally only was within a couple hours of finding these dogs that we found their owners but if you go to the next picture the one mama dog they began to rest like they were no longer running and fending for themselves and trying to get away and cold and wet. They had eaten, their bellies were full, they were dry, they were defleed. And the, and, the, and the mama dog, who was the one that was scattered the most, come and put her hands, her, her head in my hands. And she fell asleep like that. Yeah, yeah. And I said, and I was just like loving her. I was like, and I loved her with fleas all in it. And I was like, oh Lord. So, but how many times? Do we have to just go put our head yeah. in Jesus' hands yes. and say, I'm broken. I can't do anymore. I've been running. I've been trying. I've been wanting to fix it. I've been da 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 And you just got to go and yes. sit. Yes. Sid, the baby dog just sat by me and literally curled up. He just wanted to be close to me. And the mom just put her head in my hands. Just get close to Jesus. Just go put your head in his hands and let him heal you and let him touch you and let him restore you and let him do what only he can do. And the next picture shows them knocked out. <laughs> And I loved it because it was such a picture of Christ and Naya. If you would come up in John chapter 12, verse seven, after everyone was coming against Mary for what she was doing, Jesus spoke these words and they ring in my spirit constantly at times. He said, then Jesus said, let her alone. Mm -hmm. Let her alone because she's doing this for my burial. See, what was going on is Jesus was going to die at the, on the cross and Mary knew it and Mary had faith in Christ. So Mary was broken in gratefulness of what Jesus was going to do for her and he protected her. He said, let her alone. So when you're going in forward with Jesus and the enemy comes in, Speak those words in your spirit. And even out, out loud if you have to. Jesus said, let them alone. Jesus said, let her alone. If you need to speak it over your family members, over your brothers, over your sisters, over whoever, whoever you're praying for, let her alone that the enemy would leave in Jesus' name. And that we could be broken before him if we could all stand up.
です。